Right. And if you saw this much of a wire coming off my ear and it was white, what? that's right. I took something stupid like a cord and I branded it. And you know what happened is, I just, I don't know, 20 times the value to the, that commodity, that little copper wire or whatever, I don't know what's inside. But like, that, this right here, how much would you pay for this? A Radio Shack. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense? This was red. Right? And it was an official Beats plug-in thing, whatever this is. How much more do you think this costs? Yeah, there you go. You know why? I just attached it to a story. Right? It's, it's everywhere. It's the reason why Starbucks costs $4 and the beans cost $0.03 cents or whatever. Yeah. The market is bonkers. If you read um, Howard Schultz when he talks about Starbucks, he, he said that Starbucks was going to rise and fall on one idea. And the idea was this, can we raise the global palate for coffee? Everybody's used to this like, you know, sludge from World War II, it's like soldiers stuff, right? <laughs> can I raise the global palate for coffee? If I can do that, I can take something from 25 cents to 450, right? And he did it. The funny thing is his marketing guy at the time was the same guy that did, did the uh, Just Do It campaign. Same guy behind Starbucks, Nike, another, another huge one. Um, he was at Apple for a while. Same dude was behind a lot of that stuff. You think he understands how to do this? <laughs> yeah. Yes, he absolutely does. Um, so that's just how, I mean, that's how he works. And you know the funny thing is? Uh, like, if you actually study this stuff, how our brains work, when you put on a pair of shoes and they say Prada, right? you actually feel better. Like really, like our brains trick us. You get like endorphins, <laughs> right? The food actually tastes better if somebody tells you it's a five-star restaurant. It's the same thing. You know, I mean, they do these blind studies all the time. Same stuff, right? That's why, I mean, like, I, I, there's, uh, I think I told you guys about the Toyota story, right? The classic, Toyota. So, Toyota identified a market, and the market was people that could afford a car between uh, something like $26,000 and like $36,000. And they identified this market, and they, um, they were like, how do we get to this market? And they found out that their highest value was being perceived as smart. Not whether or not they were smart, but that was the highest value was that people think they're smart. And so they go, okay, well, if smart, right, if smart is at the center here, what would a car look like for somebody who's smart, right? Well, they want to be seen, okay, they want to be seen, but they want to be seen as smart. They don't want to disappear. So it can't look like a normal car. So we've got to make it almost ugly, <laughs> right? And it's got to have science behind it so that it's almost ugly, but that if someone was to ask them, why does your car look like that, you say, well, it's got zero drag, and you wouldn't understand. You're not as smart like I am. Right? <laughs> so what's the inside look like? It would look like something that smart people would have that you'd have to explain to someone. So they pretty much built in as many opportunities as they could for things that you'd have to explain. Okay? Now, because it's smart, so I know that it's got to look kind of like this, and because it's smart, what does the key need to do? Well, smart people's keys never have to come out of their pocket because they're smart. So when I get close to the car, it just unlocks it for me. My key's just as smart. Well, my key's smart, not as smart as me, but my key's pretty smart. Um, so what does the key look like, right? And of course, you know, that was, the product was the Prius. Right? So that was the product. Okay? Um, and just know that they started here, and if they didn't have this, all you're doing is you'll never innovate. The Prius was extremely innovative vehicle. Like, that thing blew up, okay? If you look at, like, what Nissan did with the Leaf, right? They can't get market penetration like crazy. They're dying on, they're dying on the vine, but the, the Prius just keeps on going. You know, because really what the Leaf they're trying to do with, like, Nissan and the Leaf is they're going... 
Well, I know the Prius did good. What if we can make our version of, you know, right? They're not innovating. They're just copying other people's stuff. What Toyota was smart with is they knew why they were building what they were building. They knew who they were building it for. And that made the decisions really easy to make. If you don't have this, you're seriously, all you're left with is, well, the competition is doing this. How can we do that a little bit better? 